Well, as promised, we're going to bring in Mbumalelo Zikalal. He's a legal analyst, and we'll be looking at some of the factors around this case, and particularly what we can expect tomorrow. But before we get there, let's listen to another part uh, or an excerpt from the last court sitting here in Peter Marisburg with Judge Pete Kuhn. In that, he, he talks about the fact that an appeal could come at the end of a trial, and there was no, there was no ne necessary reason that a special plea needed to be launched. It seemed redundant, if I had to paraphrase what he was saying there. Let's listen into that uh, before we pick up the conversation with Mr. Zikalala. Mr. Zuma has pleaded not guilty to all the charges, and he remains to be tried. Permitting an appeal only at the end of the trial is practical, because if Mr. Zuma is acquitted, the time spent on any appeal against the dismissal of the special plea would have been wasted would amount to a waste of limited judicial resources and would have no practical significance. Resorting to appeals prior to the finalization of a trial results in delay, fragmentation of the process and the determination of issues based on an inadequate record. There are no compelling considerations to the contrary requiring that an appeal be permitted now. It is furthermore inimical to the interests of justice to permit an appeal if the appeal has no process of success. Let's bring in Mpumalelo Zigalala now. Mr. Zigalala, thank you so much for, for joining me. I want to pick up on that excerpt that we were listening to there. So, effectively, are we looking at a situation where the last 18 months was just wasted time, true to the Stalingrad tactics that uh, many say Mr. Zuma has been practicing. Afternoon to you and also to your viewers. I would, I would say no. This is why I say so. Now, if you have a certain legal option or legal avenue that you can be able to explore and the intention is to protect the, your legal interests or your rights, it is absolutely fine. You can do that. It's in a, a right which is available to you, an avenue which is available to you, and it must be traversed before we even start with any trial mm -hmm. that you need to start to. So to some, they may look at it as a Stalin grant um, tactic. To some, they may look at it as, say, as saying, I want to make sure that the person who's going to prosecute me, mm -hmm. a person who's going to preside over my matters, a person who's going, who's going to take a decision which is in the interest of justice. We have the Constitution, and it guarantees us that right to a fair trial under Section 35. I mean, if it means that I need to challenge a few things before I actually the first witness goes into the first in the witness box, then let's do so. So I wouldn't say it was a Stalin Grant uh, tactic. Mm. Yes, some may view it as time wasting, but I think it's an important step that needs to be done within a trial just to make sure that everything is fair. So essentially, clearing the path or opening the way or paving the way mm. for the trial to actually continue. But that brings us to the business of the day tomorrow, mm. because tomorrow we're expecting a very important decision mm. to be taken there. What, what options are we faced with effectively when Judge Pete Kuhn comes into this courtroom tomorrow? Well, there are a number of options that are there. Firstly, is going to say we've been waiting for the Concord to decide on this matter. They've fully decided on it. And as you stated, it has paved the way for the trial to actually start. From the side of the state, are your witnesses ready? When can we be able to start? Are your diaries, have they been cleared? Remember that each time that we arrive at this court, it, the judge has been very clear in terms of saying clear your diaries, especially for the whole term. Now, the next term, which is due, uh, if I'm not mistaken, starts on the 11th of April and ends somewhere in June. So you may see that the judge saying that let's block term two because I want to make sure that I, have, I want to have the full 10 weeks mm. so that we're able to deal with this matter once and for all. Certainly, it's not going to end within that particular 10 weeks, but there can be a lot of mileage that can be gained if the, actually the trial actually starts. So it's one of the things in which the judge is going to be very particular in terms of testing. Are you ready to start? Are there any hindrances which are going to be there? Have you exchanged any documents? Are there any statements that need to be exchanged? Are there any affidavits or witnesses that you need to fly in? Mm -hmm. If that's the case, just make sure that you have your house in order because I don't want any delays when the trial actually starts. And the judge has been very clear on that position of making sure that everything is, mm -hmm. is in order before it proceeds. So mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to watch that decision mm -hmm. tomorrow. But I, I did ask this question to Mr. Mani earlier, and uh, he responded. But he also said that you know this was uh, he, he wasn't going to be discussing the strategy of the legal team as such. He just mm. wanted uh, you know they wanted everything to be ironed out before the trial proceeds. Mm. But I want to know the implications of the private prosecution against Billy Downer. 
especially whether that is going to have any implication on whether this trial proceeds or not. It, it shouldn't, and this is why I say so. Um, you see, when a person is sitting in court, they are referred to as an accused. The reason why they are referred to as an accused is that they are not found guilty as yet. So they are right in, or they are protected in terms of being regarded as an innocent person are still there. Now, that would apply to the former president, who is then referred to as accused in this case, and also advocate Billy Down in the private persecution case. Mm. So it shouldn't be an impediment which is going to take place, or the one where they would say, how can I be prosecuted by prosecutors and accused in another matter that I'm also prosecuting? It sounds like a conundrum, yes. It sounds mm. like something which is, should not really happen within our justice system. But if you look at it from the, the way in which our legal system, which is based, the kind of principles that we follow, there's really nothing wrong with it, even though it might sound a bit yeah. uh, not coherent. Nothing wrong with the proceeding as yeah, it stands. It definitely. So you may find a situation where uh, in, in this month, the prosecutor is going to be Advocate Billy Downer. The next month, the prosecutor is going to be mm. the former president. What is important, though, is that all the legal procedures that must be followed in terms of the Constitution, in terms of the Criminal Procedure Act, and other applicable pro provisions, either through case law, must be followed to the T to ensure that everything goes according to plan. Mm. Now, if there is any fairness that takes place within your trial, and that hinders your right as per Section 35 of the Constitution. Mm. You are supposed to raise those instances as you go along with, it, with, with the trial. And it is only on appeal in which you are going to say, you know, part of the reasons why I'm arriving to the, to the appeal court is that during these particular proceedings where I was given an opportunity or the state was given an opportunity to prove beyond reasonable doubt that I'm indeed guilty, there are certain instances of injustice that took place. There are certain instances where evidence might have been let which should have, shouldn't have been there in the first place and which is causing all these problems that you are facing. So on that basis alone, I did not have a fair trial due to a, a prosecutor Mm. who is more obsessed with me rather than actually doing this job. That's only the only time in which we'd get to raise your points. But Mr. Zakalala, this is something, uh, in your opinion, mm. do you think that ca can be exploited by Mr. Zuma's legal team, uh, despite what you've told me now? Mm. Is there still room for this to be used to delay this trial? Well, you can still make an application. There's nothing stopping you in making that particular application. But the most important part is, is the application going to have merit? Mm. Are you then going to come back and say, I have now new facts because I have a person who is charged, I have a person who is facing criminal proceedings when in the first place I didn't have that. Mm. I have a person who I have laid complaint against with, uh, with the legal practice counsel. So there are definitely more facts or maybe the, 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 the goalpost has shifted to what yeah. I came to you earlier. Can you please reconsider my application based on that? And the court has every reason to say, yes, we are granting you that particular reprieve, or no, we are not. Now, our courts have been very clear. When it comes to the charge to prosecute, it is purely administrative and nothing more. So if you have the administrative procedures and the approvals which are required for you to be a prosecutor, which Advocate Billy Downer really does have because mm. he's fully employed by the NPA, then the matter can be able to proceed. There's nothing which is going to impede it from, mov from moving on. So there may be other applications which, are, which can come through, but I doubt the success of those applications. They may be... Mm -hmm. a, a, a bit on, on, on the weak side. I think even the court is going to say, we are more than ready to mm -hmm. hear this matter. We have, you have explored and given you much, much avenue to explore whatever that you wanted to explore. But it's, I think it's high time that you come back and sit with this court, let the first witness go into the witness yeah. box, and actually start dealing with the credibility of the witnesses and the evidence which is against you. Just uh, before we wrap in, just an extremely short answer, if you could mm -hmm. tell me, mm -hmm. if it does go the way of the judge refusing himself without preempting anything. I just mm. want to understand how long of a delay or how much of a delay could we potentially be looking at? It, sh it shouldn't be. It's purely an administrative matter. The judge president will simply allocate the matter to another individual. There's no evidence which has been, has been led, so there's no instances in which a, a witness is going to be a record. So uh, call it a perfect time for the mm. judge to refuse himself at this stage because there's no evidence that has been led. So there's not going to be any delay which is going to take place. Sure. Thank you so much for your time. Bumalelo Zikalala, their legal analyst. He'll also be joining us tomorrow, so we will be able to continue that chat with him. So although the trial itself may not be starting, nevertheless, a very crucial decision that will be taken tomorrow, which will then influence the trajectory of, uh, of this trial and where it goes, including when the trial itself will be starting. We'll be here. We'll be providing updates from tomorrow morning uh, to our viewers. Uh, for now, it's back to the studio.
Mm, thank you so much. Of course, that's our senior reporter, Desen Tatia, just giving us an update there, uh, Pitkun, Judge Pitkun, to make that um, very important decision tomorrow, um, whether or not he will recuse himself from that um, corruption trial of um, former President Jacob Zuma.